Finance Commission allocation report to add. Okay, motion from Treasurer Smith to add reports item E, finance allocation report. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Second, Representative Johnson. Uh, is there any discussion on this amendment? Uh, has that already been passed? Through? Yeah. All right. I finance today. Oh, I finance. Yeah. I meant has it been passed around here? Oh, no, I have it right here. Oh, okay. Can I pass that now? Yes, please. Okay, uh, is there any other discussion on this amendment? Well, with no discussion, we move to the vote. All those in favor of approving this amendment, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? Amendment passes. Is there any other discussion on the approval of the agenda today? Secretary Bermudez. Thank you. I would like to move on to the use of before report. Okay. Um, motion from Secretary Bermudez to move new business to before reports. Second from President Santuri. Is there any discussion on this amendment? With no discussion, we move to a vote. All those in favor of approving this amendment, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? <laughs> amendment passes. Is there any other discussion on the agenda today? With no more discussion, we move to a vote. Um, all those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> agenda is passed. Um, next, we move to approval of the minutes of November Motion. 19th, 2014. Motion from Representative Rose, second from President Santuri. Is there any discussion on these minutes? <coughs> With no discussion, we move to a vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> minutes are passed. Okay, we have a speaker today, uh, Mr. James Murphy of the campus, he is the campus sustainability coordinator, <laughs> and he's going to talk to us for a few minutes here. Um, the floor you is yours, much. Mr. Murphy. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, extend my thanks to President Santori for uh, inviting me here tonight to speak to you. Um, this is something that I've done every semester since I came on in my role as sustainability coordinator. Um, basically, for those of you who don't know what a sustainability coordinator is, I do all things green for the, ca for the campus. Um, I'm involved with the energy efficiency programs we have with a company called Amoresco. Um, they're gonna spend uh, <coughs> about seven and a half million dollars over the next uh, 15 years to bring our um, energy uh, consumption to its most efficient state. Uh, that is gonna be a guaranteed savings over the next uh, 15 years. Uh, in addition, uh, I'm working on um, something that's near and dear to my heart, uh, recycling <laughs> and our trash contracts. Um, it's, it's the one, we're, we're a very good uh, school in terms of sustainability. We have an environmental club, we have a campus garden, we have beehives, we, we do all things green. But the one thing that we're not doing, um, I believe, up to our capabilities is recycling. And uh, I just heard some great news from the president uh, tonight about a second water bottle filling station that is gonna be put into effect in Dunavant Dining. Um, last year, the president of student community government, Hilary Costa, uh, got the water bottle filling station uh, into effect with, with Mark Paolucci. Um, and I just walked out and it, it's, this has only been in effect since May. It has seen the college, what was it, 3,962 water bottles? 3,692, yeah. 3,600, <laughs> I remember this lexic, so I apologize. Um, so that's 3,600, almost 3,700 water bottles out of our trash stream. We pay a lot for trash and recycling to come off the campus. So uh, this second uh, water station, I hope is the second of many more. I wanna see them in, engaging Craig Lee, um, but that's not the only uh, thing or the only method that we can, uh, where we can do better. We gotta start in the dorms, uh, we gotta start in Donovan Dining. I, I 
came up at, at 6.30 this evening to, to have dinner in, in dining and, and to watch. Since I uh, came on in this role, I, I've been watching. I'm the guy that goes around and looks in dumpsters. I look in garbage cans. Um, you know, it's not out of choice. It's out of, you know, my obligation to the college. We have a ton of plastic water bottles. We have a ton of paper that's ending up in our trash stream. Ladies and gentlemen, we pay about $150,000 a year to get that off our campus, okay? There are schools in this state that recognize revenue from those commodities. Okay, those are commodities by which towns and, and cities in this state are paid money for, okay? <coughs> Why can't we? This is the question, okay? I am hoping that if I can just gain your attention in this matter this year, we're really gonna go to town in the spring semester in terms of a, a recycling commitment from every student. All right, it's gonna start in the dorms and it's gonna work its way over. As you see out here, we have recycling bins, uh, bottles, cans, paper, and waste. Within the next two months, you will see all of those being refaced to recognize the single stream um, recycling effort that the state has put forward. You don't have to separate anymore. Plastic, aluminum, paper, it can all go into one. We are also, by 2016, as a college, going to be held liable for organic waste that gets into our trash stream. So we gotta start pulling out banana peels, food waste, okay, coffee grounds, all of the things that can be, re that can be composted, okay? And what does that do? That shrinks that $150,000 a year, okay? $150,000 a year could go into more funding for student community government programs. <laughs> Am I right? I don't know, we could pay for another fraternity to come on campus. Right? <laughs> I'm a Kappa Delta Phi guy, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Good luck tonight. Um, the, these are the things that you graduate from college, these are the jobs of the future, okay? It's energy efficiency, it's, it's renewable energy, it's recycling and composting. Uh, any company that is worth their salt, they're doing this now, okay? And I just would hope that I would have the support of student community government to do these things and, and to not only participate, but spread the word, the gospel of green. <laughs> it's not easy being green. <laughs> Kermit the Frog said it best. But this is where we are. And our peer schools right now are doing a little bit better than we are in terms of recycling. And that's not to say we can't do better. Um, I don't want to take up a ton of your time. I'd be more than happy to answer questions that you may have on this subject matter or any other subject matter relating to sustainability. But we cannot do this without you, okay? I, I, can, I can look at all the garbage cans I want, you know? <laughs> and I can see all those plastic bottles and paper and cardboard in that trash stream and say, wow, we could be making money on that. You know, it, it comes down to, and, and it's not just students, it's faculty and staff too. I, I will be the first to admit that, okay? Um, I need your help, and I'm more than happy to open it up for questions. Mark told me I only had 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alumni Representative Costley, you are first on the list. Jim, my buddy. <laughs> um, so, Jim is great to work with, by the way. I hope that everyone gets to work here with him. Um, one thing that I wanted you to answer for the folks at home and the folks here. Um, so between the fact that it's tough to get things implemented quickly and in a timely fashion, sometimes it takes a whole year to get them implemented, 
or sometimes the funds just aren't there, we just have the tuition increase approved. What are maybe say three things or a couple of things that resident students on campus can do without any of these amenities available to become a more green resident on campus? That's very simple and I'm glad you asked that question. Trash follows the path of least resistance, okay? Recycling follows the path of least resistance. Now, these recycling containers, we have 20 of them across the campus. I know in the dorms, I've been through every dorm uh, on the campus. I, I know we have recycling bins over there, but we just tend to put that recyclable wherever it's convenient for us, okay? Um, it's not about what's convenient for you, it's doing the right thing and putting it in the right spot, all right? I'm walking around and if I don't see a recycle bin, I'm like you, I'm ready to throw it in the trash. I don't want to carry this thing around with me for the rest of the day. And, and I realize that it, it, it hinders you from doing the right thing. Um, however, they do exist on campus. Find the place to put them. Um, that's number one, you know. Get rid of it in the right place. <coughs> Number two, encourage students that you see not doing what they should be doing, okay? It, it, it may be an issue where they come from a town or a city or, or from out of state where it's not as prevalent as it is here. Um, they might just need, you know, a little help with that. Um, number three, uh, Minimize your waste, okay? Uh, these water bottle filling stations are the perfect uh, example of minimizing your waste. We saved 3692. 3692. 3692. All right. Now we put another one in, in Donovan. We put one in Gage. We put one in Craig Lee. When those buildings are being remodeled, you know, we're multiplying the amount of waste. Uh, that's being held out of our trash stream, okay, and that and that saves us money. So I hope those are three things that you know, students, faculty, and staff. We're all in this together. It's not just about students. Faculty and staff have a responsibility in this as well. <laughs> One more thing, Jim. You put it in a perspective of <coughs> please recycle because you'll save the school one hundred and fifty thousand. Is well, there a, a portion of that. Of course. We're not going to school all of that. No, no, no. We're still going to pay more school. But is there another way that you can put that to show the threat without putting it in a way that it's saving the school money? Because I think students now are a little bitter and saying, I give the school enough money and now tuition is being raised. Can you put the threat of not being green in another way that's more sure. universal? First of all, I will say that despite you know, the increased tuition, and I was a student at Rhode Island College and I paid my way through here as well, was still cheaper than our comparative peer institutions across New England. However, um, if you want to take a different look at the recycling game, uh, you know, outside of the college, or the Rhode Island College context, keep in mind that the Rhode Island landfill in Johnston, Rhode Island Resource Recovery, only has about 20 years of life left in it, okay? At the current rate of us discharging our waste into the landfill, it's got 20 years. They can only go so high, all right? They can only make the mountain so big. They can't go out, people own property all around it, okay? And it kind of sucks for them because they're stuck in the middle of the summer smelling all that, uh, you know, so we're not going to let that space get any bigger as a state. What happens then is the prices will go up to dispose of our trash if we don't do something now because we'll have to take it out of state. Okay? And if you can imagine that it costs us about 150000 to bring it to Johnston, can you imagine what it's going to cost us to bring it elsewhere? Okay, so try to keep our costs low. That is one area that you will definitely help the college. I hope that answers it as best as possible. Thank you.
Miss Chan, I hope we can catch up after the meeting. <laughs> miss you. Awesome. Thank you, Representative Costa. Um, Representative Jason, you are next on the list. <laughs> oh, gosh, darn it. oh my God, one day I'll get this right. Representative Johnson. Two <laughs> meetings in a row, Representative Howard. <laughs> two meetings in a row. Uh, I actually have two questions for you, my friend. I caught things that I just wanted you to expand upon for me. Um, you mentioned composting during your speech. Now, I, um, I, I've actually built compost boxes on stuff in my spare time, and I know a little bit about composting. Do you already have plans to start a composting program here at Rhode Island College, or is that just something in the works? No, I am, I am picking up three composting bins tomorrow morning at Rhode Island Resource Recovery with Greg Gamble, the director of our landscaping um, department. Right. And we are gonna utilize those in Dunavin Dining for all of the food prep scrap that's created. All right, that's the first step of a multi-year plan. We're, we're gonna be ready for this by 2016, January of 2016, where we're gonna have to do this. <coughs> So we're, we're gearing up towards it, and it starts tomorrow when we pick them up. Uh, we are composting at the campus garden, and we're also co composting at the campus greenhouse. So this will enhance it. We're, we're definitely, uh, with these three composters, we will kick it up a notch. Uh, and the beautiful thing, as you know about compost, is we eliminate the cost of getting rid of that trash, and we get Black gold, the best soil you can grow anything in. Yeah, you know, we put that in our beds, in our garden, on, on campus, and it's free. You know, a lot of gardeners pay, pay top dollar for that type of material. You're not lying. Uh, the other thing is, out of curiosity, do you know, uh, you mentioned this $150,000 figure quite a bit. That, you know that's a ballpark figure, I will okay. say. It's a combination of recycling figures and trash figures. That kind of answers my question. Um, I was going to ask, do you know how that works? Like where? We have a three year contract with waste management. Okay. And we have a three year contract with a company called MTG. They handle our recycling, waste management handles our, with our, our trash. Um, we are one and a half years into these three year contracts and I'm looking to spec the next contract to uh, maximize the efficiency for the college. And uh, that's something I'm working with um, Megan Keefe, the Assistant Director of Facilities and Operations, and with Arthur Patry and Dunham and Dunham. Thank you very much, that's all for me. Okay, thank you, Representative Johnson. Thank you, Representative <laughs> Next we move to yes. Representative Prisoko. I just wanted to bring to your attention that two of the dorms don't have working water facilities. I have plenty of water bottles in my room, but I don't get to use them in my dorm. I live okay. in Weber and there's no water fountain. Teresa Brown or Brian Lowry? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't know if that was Work on it. Yeah, yeah. You need to make your voice heard over there. Okay. okay. I have only so much power and control. Uh, I, I'm limited in handcuffed uh, in, in many things, but those are the two people that can help you there. Are there any other questions for Mr. Murphy today? All right, well, thank you, Mr. Murphy, for giving us your time. We sincerely appreciate it. I really appreciate it, and I, I hate to leave, but I, I <laughs> gotta get home to help with my kids' homework. <laughs> um, if you need me for anything, President Centuri knows how to find me. Uh, Jane Murphy, too, at rick.edu. Um, I would be more than happy to um, you know, we need the help, so you know, if you want to get involved, you know, I, I have 101 jobs for anybody that, uh, you know, can volunteer their time. And I thank you for uh, letting me be here. Awesome. Mark Paolucci didn't have to pull me off a little bit.
huge asset to this college, and I think he's done some really great work in his short time here, and I'm happy to be working with him on a number of projects, and I know in the spring semester, him and I were talking before the meeting, and we'll be working on a couple of things in the spring. So if you're interested in sustainability <coughs> and making the college a greener, greener and happier place, do please see me, and we can work together with him on those kind of projects. I know he has some interesting stuff, hopefully coming down the pipe. Uh, he kind of stole a little bit of my thunder on the board filling station, but he is correct in that, say, at uh, finance, we had the funding approved for a new water filling station in Don and Dining Center on the second floor, right near the bathrooms. For those of you who don't know, I'm not sure where it's going to be. Um, it is ADA uh, acceptable. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we chose the model we did. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how many water bottles it saves in the how it benefits the college community as a whole. Uh, going on into my announcements, also today, uh, <coughs> in finance, as, uh, as uh, usual, I guess you could say, uh, student community government got the funding approved for 24-7 library hours in the next two weeks at the end of the semester. I say this because over the winter break, uh, myself and a couple, uh, at least, and I'm hoping members of the e board uh, will meet with uh, Tova Rice, who is the about extending library hours to midnight during the semester. I'm hoping to have good news on that when we meet back in the spring, but that's something I can talk about all year. And so hopefully something will come of it. Uh, something, a couple other things just to keep you guys aware. Um, next Wednesday during free period, I had to book the room. It was uh, postponed today, unfortunately, for a couple of reasons, but we'll be having QPR training, long awaited. Uh, I want. I move. I asked them, and they agreed to move it to next week, uh, to, to be in during free period due to uh, the people how we're busy. Uh, for those of you who weren't here before, it's uh, Dr. Lavin with when he was here talking about uh, training to help those uh, who are having uh, <coughs> mental, uh, not so much mental issues, but in order to help with suicide awareness and that sort of thing. It's a really uh, nice training program. It's very, uh, I guess, emotional in a way. So if you're not comfortable doing it, that's fine. But I welcome each and every one of you to join me in doing so. Uh, if you're looking for more information, I'll be, I'll be sure to have uh, uh, Ms. Bottom send out an email before we end with the full information. But that's just so you guys are aware. I hope you guys all can make it. Uh, other things too, um, over the course of winter break, uh, the executive board and I will be discussing what to do with the student entertainment this came up, this was a question last meeting. Uh, we'll be discussing what to do with it in terms of performing it, killing it. All the options are on the table. I'm looking, I'll be sure to get Palman input as well at the first meeting of next semester. But if you have input you'd like to tell me after the meeting, feel free to do so. I welcome any and all opinions. But as of right now, and I don't see that changing anytime soon, there will not be a uh, concert for the spring semester. But yeah, so if you have any opinions about the SEC, please do see me. Um, <coughs> also, too, um, the work with Dr. Patry over in Donovan, who's been wonderful with the water filling station and a whole bunch of other projects this year. Uh, it's working on getting a charging station in Donovan as well. Uh, just a matter of getting the funding for that. <coughs> and I have to go talk to housing in the near future, hopefully, uh, about ground hall printing, otherwise known as 24-7. <laughs> so when we come back in the spring semester, hopefully there will be significant progress on a number of these projects. And on the other side, uh, what are we doing? One second. And one other thing, well, two other things. Uh, one not so serious, and one so serious. One not serious, serious. Uh, if anyone's interested, after the meeting, Representative Fazoko is selling candy for active minds to fundraise for them. I bought Airheads and Three Musketeers bottles. I will, show you, I will show you the more Airheads I bought, but I already ate three of them tonight, so uh, there's that. But it's really cheap candy, you save a dollar or two in your wallet, be sure to head on by. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say in my announcements uh, this evening is I want to not so much issue a challenge to student parliament, but I want to um, expand upon what I talked about briefly, uh, briefly expand upon what I talked about in my big giant speech last week to you all about student
students like and about SEG this year, where we're going, to, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> and I think that something I want each of you to do during the winter break, you know, when you have all that time off, hopefully, or if you're not, if you're working, you have plenty of hours sitting there with uh, nothing to do, uh, I want you to ask yourself, what is the purpose of student parliament? But more importantly, what do you expect to get out of student parliament? And also, what do you expect from student parliament to do for the campus community as a whole? You know, we each have our own ideas, and I really want to hear from each of you what you think we're supposed to do here. Because I think the number one thing that always comes up is expectations. You know, what do you expect from bodies like these, you know, and, and such. And I think that something I, I'd like to see in the spring semester, I'll just reference a couple examples, <coughs> is I want to see each of you try to be innovative or creative and come up with a resolution of sorts. If you have no idea how to write a resolution, I'd be happy to help you. Uh, I'm not the best writer in the world, as some people will attest, but I can at least get you a good starting point. Uh, a couple things that I could have, I've been doing this year could be resolutions, for example. Uh, advocating for extended library hours, Ext advocating for another water filling station, uh, advocating for Brown Hall printing, 24-7 uh, printing on campus. These are the kind of issues that students will often not so much complain, but want to make their voices heard about because these are issues that are important to them. You know, there's no way, there's no place to print at <coughs> on campus for students unless you have a printer, and not every student does, or have the ink, which can be expensive. So I think that these are the kind of things that we have to be aware of things that we should be addressing as students. So talk to people, talk to your friends, go outside your social circle, talk to people and see what issues they have here at the college, because I'm sure they exist. I'm sure you know, we're a body of, that varies between 15, 20 people this semester so far, but there, I'm sure there are things that even we don't hear about, and I'm sure there are because students bring up things to me over the course of semesters I had no idea were an issue. You know, I didn't know up until this point that there's not water in two of the rest hall. That's kind of a big deal, guys. You know, that's 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 important. These are the kind of things that, you know, at the very least, if SCG is not put the resolution for, we can at least advocate to get fixed. Or have myself call, you know, pick up the phone, because I don't mind doing that, and calling someone and saying, hey, you know, why is this happening? So if it at least can't get fixed for it right away, I can at least have an answer for them. And I think the other thing, too, is, um, you know, I don't want to say like bring a friend policy. But most of you, I think, hopefully all of you have friends. I know I have, I, I have friends I like to think. I don't know if they would call me friends in return, but we all have friends. And I think, but I think that's something I'd like to see it for us to do is I want you to talk to people when they're in your social circle or not and see, engage their interest about joining student parliament and asking them, you know, would they like to help make their campus better on a Wednesday night? You know, we don't ask for too much of your time, I don't think, and I think that, you know, I think that the, the, the key step is just going out and talking to people, and I think that's something I really want to try and emphasize and do in the spring semester, is go out and talk to people more and try and reach as many students as possible. So that's just me on my soapbox for the moment, but I'll, I'll get off it now, and I appreciate you guys all being here this evening, even though it's the last evening of the semester, I know you're all probably busy with finals, and I wish you the best of luck with that, and I give the floor back Vice President Berger, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so just a couple quick things. Um, the uh, elections for uh, the vacant uh, freshman class positions, um, just to reiterate, we had three uh, freshman class representative spots, um, representatives of parliament. Uh, we had three of those open. And we also have the, uh, the secretary of the freshman class. We also need to elect one uh, somebody for that spot. Um, the declaration period is currently going on right now. It will be going on through uh, Monday. At, uh, it will end at noon on Monday. Um, the election I intend to hold uh, the following day on the Tuesday the 9th. Um, hopefully I can get uh, at least some turnout for that. It would be nice to get, even if I can't uh, get enough people to fill all the vacant spots, if I can at least get a couple people to, to be ready and come in fresh for the next semester, uh, I would welcome that. Um, so if you have any friends who are freshmen or know people who are trying to get involved, and uh, this, is, this is just a great opportunity uh, for them. Um, also, uh, we held the town hall not this past Thursday, but the Thursday before. Um, we, uh, we had uh, a, lot of, a lot of people came with a uh, few concerns that their friends had, and uh, it was uh, pretty, uh, pretty informative.
positive, at least on my end, for what um, a lot of people are uh, experiencing for issues in the residence halls. Um, and so I will be taking those concerns to the appropriate committee, so if you're on those, um, expect to hear those soon. Um, and also, I guess, to follow up with uh, what President Santori was explaining about uh, trying to get a resolution uh, together for next year. Um, if you are short on ideas, um, I have a sheet from the town hall of about 18 uh, issues, so if you would like to come see me, I can uh, give you an idea for uh, something to tackle for a resolution. Um, other than that, that is the end of my announcements. Okay, thank you, Vice President Broder. Secretary Bermudez, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <coughs> can you uh, guys hear me? Can what? you hear me? <laughs> okay. Enjoy the holidays, Jarrell. 
Uh, seeking a motion, motion from Vice President Broder, second from Representative Trombley. Is there any discussion on this leave? With no discussion, we move to a vote. All those in favor of approving, approving the leave, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> Extensions, leave passes. Just one more, guys. Dear Madam Speaker, it is with regret that I inform you that I will not be present for the December 3rd meeting. I usually don't let this happen, but I have to finish a huge paper for Thursday. I apologize. Please have a good meeting. P.S. Thank you to everyone who RSVP'd to the holiday party that the lovely Doris and I have been planning. We'll see you there. P.P.S. I would like to thank Representative Rose for his service on Parliament and wish him the best in his future endeavors. This is his last meeting. Thank oh, he's not even here. <laughs> thank you, Representative Fane. Motion from Secretary Bermudez, second from Treasurer Smith. Is there any discussion on this leave? With no discussion, we move to a vote. All those in favor of approving the leave, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions. Leave passes. And that's about it for <coughs> me, guys. Uh, Deputy Speaker Mandeville, the floor is yours. Um, I don't have any announcements. Um, oh, I met with Arthur from Donovan. Um, he and I are planning on um, having a luncheon with my committee about discussing goals for um, just because Conditions and Services is always working with complaints about Donovan. So if you're interested in joining us on those luncheons and trying to meet a common goal with Donovan, um, <laughs> feel free to come see me so I can give availability to Arthur for those. Um, okay. Um, with that, we move to the new item seven, which is new business. Um, Constitution, Secretary Bermudez, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So um, today I have two constitutions for you guys. Um, the first one is the musical theater company, PFAC. Is anybody here? So if you guys just want to stand and um, you guys ex explain your, con your constitution to us. Um. Sure. My name is Neil Dunham. I'm the treasurer of the music theater company. My name is Jennifer Bell. I'm the secretary.
move to a vote. All those in, in favor of approving the Resident Student, Student Association Conference Report, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstentions? Oh, just kidding. Uh, the record show that Representative Goldberg abstains. And with that, the conference report is passed. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, once again, you are more than welcome to stay if you want to, but you absolutely do not have to. <laughs> Next, we move to your reports item B, Finance Commission Minutes of November 19th, 2014. <laughs> Treasurer Smith, the floor is yours. Uh, what you have in front of you in your packets is the minutes for the November 19th meeting. Uh, they've already been passed by finance, which is <coughs> trouble, so I ask that they be accepted with unanimous consent. Are there any objections to these minutes being accepted with unanimous yeah. consent? <laughs> with that, minutes are accepted. Next, we move to Conditions and Services Minutes of October 20th, 2014. Deputy Speaker Mandeville, the floor is yours. Um, you have the minutes from my last meeting with my committee, and I ask that these are accepted with unanimous consent. Are there any objections to these minutes being accepted with unanimous consent? With that, minutes are accepted. Next, we move to student, student organization. Wow. I'm struggling today. I apologize. <laughs> student organization committee minutes of November 19th, 2014. Secretary Bermudez, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, so these are the minutes for my committee's meetings on the 19th. I ask that they be accepted with unanimous consent. Is there any objection to these minutes being accepted with unanimous consent? With no objections, minutes are passed. Next, we move to reports item E, finance allocation report. Treasurer Smith, the floor is yours. Uh, before anyone raises their card, I noticed two or three mistakes when I was printing these out earlier this evening. Um, the date is wrong in two places, and I don't have the exact month we spent this year. So I'm seeking a friendly, make, uh, a friendly amendment to change the date when it's, where it says November 3rd, 2014, to December 3rd, 2014. Oh, okay. someone else has We spent is wrong as well. It reads $46,824.36. It should read $71,872.36. Everything below my little spiel is correct. It's the little window dressing I missed. It's $71,872.36. Should I just write it on the board? Seventy-one thousand. <laughs> <laughs> $872.36. I said it right three times, very proud of myself. <laughs> and then I asked that all of these be considered as friendly. Are there any objections to all of these amendments being accepted as friendly? With no objections, amendments are accepted as friendly. Treasurer Smith, the floor is also yours. Um, does anyone have any questions for me about the report? Finance did pass it, which I think is the embarrassing part for myself twice. <laughs> 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 um, if no one has any questions, I guess that's it. Okay, uh, so seeking a motion to approve this report. Motion. motion from Representative Rose, second from Representative Johnson. <coughs> Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other discussion on the finance allocation report? With no discussion, uh, we move to a vote. All those in favor of approving the finance allocation Finance Allocation Report as amended. Please say aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? <coughs> Report passes. All right, guys, uh, now we move to updates and remarks. Administration update, Dr. Scott Kane, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, okay, so I just have a few things. The first one is a little bit longer. I hope everybody had a chance to read the anchor uh, this week, I did, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always get a chance to read her, at least not very timely. Um, and the uh, front page article is on a uh, possible tuition increase and other sort of related matters. So um, might be worth uh, your time to read that. I, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, sort of the, the process for uh, funding um, higher education, as well as a little bit about 
Rhode Island College's proposed budget for next year, just again, so students uh, kind of understand uh, where we're at. So uh, the, the, uh, in consultation with the Office of Higher Education and the commissioner who uh, is uh, for the post-secondary um, Council of, of Education, <coughs> we, the college submitted a budget proposal for next year which included um, a tuition increase and a, an increase in the amount of money that the state gives the college um, in order to pay all of the bills. So all of the salaries of for faculty and staff, all of the um, services that we provide, um, heat, electricity, all that sort of stuff comes out of, out of those funds. The college has to submit that uh, proposal relatively early before next fiscal year. Next fiscal year begins on July 1st, 2015. So this is the budget we're submitting for July 1st, 2015. And we're required to submit it um, to the Board of Education, uh, usually like in mid-October-ish. So let's just say October 15th. The board then reviews it. They have to take a look at all of the um, amounts from, and they not only have Rhode Island College's budget, but they have the CCRI's budget, URI's budget. They have to, you know, sort of, uh, they talk to leaders from the different institutions and, and get, you know, information about specific line items and those kinds of things. And then ultimately, after they've collected all of that information, they vote on it at one of their board <coughs> meetings, and that happened Monday night um, at the board meeting at, at CCRI. And usually, by the time it actually gets to a vote for the, at the board, um, they've asked all of their questions ahead of time, so there's not really much discussion that, that goes on at that particular point. That, the fact that the board voted on the tuition increase does not mean that there is going to necessarily be a tuition increase. Um, it now, that proposal now goes to the governor for his or her approval. In this case, it will be the governor-elect. She can decide to accept uh, the Board of Education's recommendations um, or she can reject them and, and put in her own budget for higher education. Um, assuming that uh, she does approve it, as is, it then goes to the General Assembly <laughs> for uh, ultimate approval. And again, they can decide to accept whatever recommendations that are sent to them, or they can decide to reject and come up with their own budget for higher education. Um, we expect that the governor-elect would likely make a decision with respect to the uh, higher education budgets, I don't know, maybe February or March, actually, there, I think there might be a specific deadline um, in which she's mandated to complete that process. But we don't really expect the General Assembly to make their decision, um, maybe not until June of 2015. So ultimately what might happen, you know, we don't know for sure, we won't know for a very long time. But that is, really it's at a sort of proposal stage at, at this point, and it, it has, uh, the increase has cleared a couple of hurdles, the college's hurdle and the Board of Education's hurdle. So that's how the, the process works. Now one of the things you uh, should know is again that the college's budget is a combination of tuition and fees that it receives from students, as well as an allocation from the state, from taxpayer monies that the state has collected. <coughs> It takes all of that, those taxpayer dollars, it divides them up you know, for transportation and, um, and elementary and secondary education, and, uh, just, you know, Department of Corrections, and whatever it might be, all of the services that it provides, and it decides, you know, divvies out a certain amount. In higher education, uh, the overall budget for the three colleges, um, for a long time, as you may know, and I think it mentions this in the article, uh, had decreased uh, significantly up until a couple of years ago when Governor Chafee finally start, started uh, trying to support and, and return some of the monies that had been cut from, from higher education from those tax dollars. So any tax dollars that you can receive, any, any uh, money you can receive from a state allocation um, helps keep the cost of tuition down, right? Because if, if we need this much money, and if <coughs> part of it is tuition dollars and part of it's state allocation, when one goes up, the other one, or when one goes down, the other one has to go up. So if uh, the state appropriation can go up, the amount of tuition that we have to charge, you know, can either go down or remain uh, level. So uh, you, the 
the Board of Education and the college actually considered three different alternatives for next year's budget. First of all, we know that our budget this year um, is it, it's in a difficult situation. You know, we're, we're, we didn't get as much money last year as we expected for this year. So we're sort of already behind the eight ball. We expect expenses to go up again next year. Um, so how do you cover you know, maybe a gap that currently exists and then ex expecting another uh, deficit to, or another gap to occur next year? So the three proposals that the college considered with the Board of Education was, we asked for a complete increase to cover the, the, uh, the gap there by uh, increasing the state appropriation, basically by getting all tax dollars, not changing tuition at all. Um, or we ask for that the gap could be uh, completely covered by an increase in tuition and not ask for any additional uh, state allocation or a combination of the two. And that's, of course, what the college did, uh, what, which was uh, supported by the board, is to ask for some more state allocation, some more tax dollars, but also to raise tuition. The reason the college thought that that was, um, and, and the Board of Education thought that that's a reasonable proposal is for a couple of reasons. One is that there hasn't been a tuition increase in several years. So it wouldn't, you know, we, we, we don't want to increase tuition every year, uh, obviously, um, but um, you just can't keep up with costs if you don't increase your revenue from some, in some way. And the other reason is the Board of uh, Education actually did an analysis of all or many, it's all, well, all <coughs> public institutions like Rhode Island College in all of the, in the state of Rhode Island as well as in Massachusetts and in Connecticut, um, schools that are comparable to Rhode Island College, so not flagship universities like UConn and, and the University <coughs> of Rhode Island and UMass Amherst, but comparable <coughs> institutions like UMass Dartmouth and Framingham State and Eastern Connecticut and Southern Connecticut. And, and I think actually might even gone to New Hampshire too, taking a look at like Keene State and all of those places. And what uh, what the board found out is that the tuition uh, that Rhode Island College charges compared to something like 26 other regional institutions was the lowest tuition of any college of its of its kind. Um, and that sort of I think when we when we looked at that analysis, we thought that you know. Um, we, don't, we certainly don't want to be the highest, and, and certainly want to be uh, at the low end, but we're, we're very reasonably priced, and we know that the other institutions will be raising their tuition and fees as well. So even if we do raise ours, we may still be at the bottom of the list um, because uh, you know, others are trying to keep up with inflation as well. So I just wanted to uh, you know, take a moment to kind of explain what the process was, so you understand what will happen and, and why this is not necessarily a done deal yet, and also why the college um, is uh, supported this uh, proposal for a tuition increase as, as much as we recognize that uh, obviously that creates a burden for, uh, for our students. We, we try to strike the balance as best we could. Any questions about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Representative. I don't have all the answers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Navarro, I saw your card first. All right, my first question is: um, When would when do you expect that we would hear word on what the governor elect is going to, decision going to be? I think that uh, there's actually legislation that requires the governor to s submit the um, budget to the general assembly by um, alumni representative. But it might be like by March 1st or something like that. But I also know that in years past that that has uh, not necessarily been followed. <laughs> so I think we're, we're, but we're sort of thinking maybe in March we would know. <coughs> that, would be, that would be about the time that we would yeah, be listening, you know, attentively to the governor. I don't think, I don't think we'll see anything in early January, mid-January, late January. And I don't think it'll And my second question is, which is my last question, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, like if our um, tuition increases, is there going to be a change in the campus that we'll see that's not coming out of SCG budget in regards of the whole and we have to pay six, eight for the eight hours? Well, I, I, you know, I don't, uh, 
I don't know line by line how the college would allocate um, its budget of tuition and fees and state allocation to all of the different departments and divisions across campus. I know uh, with respect to you know uh, the units that report to me, uh, a lot of the increase, quite frankly, would uh, really just end up keeping up with uh, inflation and and trying to cover you know some of those dollars. And you know the other thing that you may know is that there are a number of um, unfunded uh, positions, vacant positions on campus right now um, that. You know, the president has sort of decided, given our current fiscal situation, we really can't afford to, you know, fund it at this particular point. So I think some of that funding that we would receive would be to try to fill in those gaps. For, so, for example, um, instead of having an interim vice president for student affairs, <laughs> <laughs> we actually might have two positions. And, uh, you know, those, that kind of situation is across but I think, you know, you raise a good question, and I think that um, depending on whatever happens with the budget, in fact, if the college receives the money that it's looking to receive, then I think, you know, it's reasonable to ask, does this mean now that some of these expenses that the college couldn't cover before, will they be able to be covered by the college? Well, yeah, as long as those students will see, like, what's in it for me, sad, and like, since we're paying more. Thank you. Okay, uh, Vice President Broder. Um, I don't know if, uh, I'm sure you've been through the kind of process before. Um, should we expect that the numbers given uh, from us that were approved by the Board of Governors, <coughs> do we expect them to be maintained when they go to the Governor and the General Assembly, or should we expect an increase in even those numbers? Um, I guess just I don't, yeah, based I don't, on past experience. Well, I, I, I would say you know, we have a new Governor. <laughs> And, um, and she hasn't made one decision, yet, <laughs> official decision yet. So I think it's a little hard to tell. You know, we've, there's no track record uh, there to sort of base, uh, base that on. Um, the, the one thing I would sort of say is that, you know, oftentimes um, it's, you know, it's easier to make hard decisions early in one's term of office than near the end of one's term of office, especially if they're looking, uh, seeking re-election. So, but what, you know, what, what I, I don't know if, uh, you know, uh, if she's supportive of higher education or not, but, you know, in, even if she was, and if she decided she didn't, needed to make some hard decisions, I don't know what that would mean. Would that mean just, I'm not gonna give you the tuition increase, and I'm not gonna be able to give you the dollars that you're, you know, from the state, or whether, you know, she would say, uh, well, I think we're just going to have to increase <coughs> tuition more than, than what has already been proposed. I, mean, I, I, I don't think it's, it's too hard to tell. Okay. Okay. Um, next on the list, alumni representative Crosstalk. Uh -huh. No. I know who I have. I need to make some cards. She was just responding. So, <laughs> Representative <coughs> Trombley? Yeah. Okay. That's Representative Trombley. <laughs> <laughs> Look like. 
like a more moderate or amount, but you know, the college, 80% of the college's budget, I think it is, um, is related to personnel. It's money that the college spends on faculty and staff, paying for faculty and staff. And it's not just salaries, it's um, all of their benefits, including us, a portion of their health insurance. And so when health insurance goes through the roof, uh, you know, goes from you know, $10,000 for a family plan to you know, $18,000 for a family plan, it goes up by you know, almost 100%. Um, and the college is you know, picking up a significant portion of that increase. It's gonna make a difference with respect to the budget. So yeah, there's a lot of you know, different inflationary costs that it, um, you know, the college can't, well, expenses were going up, but revenue, tuition, had remained steady for the last couple of years, and the state allocation, which went up a little bit the last couple of years, but that wasn't keeping up with the inflationary costs. I have one more question. And uh, if a student had an opinion on this and wished to uh, speak, uh, as you said, it went through, I'm not sure, it went through the college and went through the Board of Higher Education? Went through the Board of Education. Board of Education, I'm sorry. Yeah. And now it's going through the governor and then the general assembly. Would there be any way for a, a students at the college to express their support or objection to this in those instances? Yeah, it um, would be. I, I would imagine to the general assembly. Yes, yeah, so that would be my arena. That's something. Uh, not to, if, if I made it, not yep, to me. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, look forward something. To President Santori. Thank you. Uh, something I was going to say this, but I guess I'll say it now. Uh, something that, you know, this is something that's, even though I'm graduating from Queen, is still a big concern for me. You know, when I came here at Rick, uh, tuition was six and a half thousand dollars or so, 2009. So now it's going to be eight thousand next year. You know, I've been here a while, but at the same time, you know, they froze tuition for three years, but I think it's become a matter eventually how sustainable is the cost going to be. Uh, something we can do, and something they have done in years past, is have a rally over at the State House uh, to, I guess, uh, protest the tuition hikes uh, that not just us, but yet you or I and CCRI are going to face in our higher education. I can tell you two things I'm going to be doing between now and the start of the next time. One is I'm going to be having, I haven't had a chance to yet have a conversation with President Cariolo about <coughs> uh, what the college is going to be doing in terms of. Uh, the funding and what if they're going to be saying anything else or advocating for grants in their own way. And then from there, I'd like to speak to my executive board about what we can do and what we have ideas for in trying to make student opinions heard because from what I've heard from students so far is that, you know, it's even though tuition's been fro frozen the last couple of years, that doesn't apply for every student here. You, you know, yourself, you're a sophomore, you haven't had the benefits of every single year that tuition's been fr frozen. So you don't necessarily <laughs> see that reflected. And I think that having students' voices heard, and, even, and especially if they're not happy with it, about the t this decision by the Board of Education is critical. I think Dr. Kane is right in saying that we're only at step one in a very long run-out process. As long as the, our funding isn't held for, her, her, for uh, further study, I think we'll all be happy. But um, I think that we really, uh, it's, it's, I think we really need to keep up on what's going on throughout the process, and I think one of the best ways to advocate against the tuition hike, I guess, so to speak, is by the general assembly. One, one stat I will throw out, and I think believe this is correct, is that in terms of all 50 states, Rhode Island's education funding is either 43rd or 47th in terms of you know how much schools give to colleges. In many states, uh, uh, Commissioner per Purcell actually came to a Rick Council meeting and he said that number. He said, you know, we're in the we're in, we're in the bottom e echelon of uh, states that fund the schools. Some states that you know, no, you know, he's because he's from the south. He said, you know, some of the states no other states to look upon fund college completely. You know, some 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 states do that. North Dakota does it. Whole bunch of states do it. Well, that's not going to happen in Rhode Island, obviously. But I think there's definitely some room for leverage, and I think there's a, I think there's a bit of a, a conversation to be had. And I think that students deserve to have their voices heard. So I'll say that for the moment. But I will definitely be happy to have you on board for working with that. Thank you, Dr. Kane. I yield the floor back. Thank you. Uh, so you know, one of my points of bringing this up is not only <coughs> so you guys kind of understand the process, but um, you know, I, I want to make sure you all understand, because I know it's hard to um, accept the tuition increase, because I hit you, you know, personally in, in your pockets. But I think you also you need to know what that means is if you're going to advocate against the tuition. <laughs> what you're advocating for, if you're not, if you 
you're not advocating for another way to generate that revenue, what you're advocating for is, by fighting a tuition increase is that something at the college can't happen the way that we're expecting it to happen. We're not gonna be able to pay for something. So it's a, it's a delicate balance. I mean, again, I know that you don't, nobody likes a tuition increase when it's your tuition dollars that you're actually paying. Um, it's a lot easier for me to accept than I know for, for students to accept. But recognize that if you uh, advocate against that, what's, you know, what's gonna go, you have to sort of decide how much you can tolerate. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Well, Dr. Tan goes in now.
was its material. So it's another book in there. Just a point of information, uh, Madam Speaker, and I'm sure one of those five questions. Those interests, I believe it's at noon tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I think it's noon tomorrow for one, and then Friday is 12 and then 12.30. So if you are interested to see myself and Dr. Wilkin at the meeting, I'll be happy to get you uh, the room numbers. I have the email in my, on my phone, but I, I, it is a really big thing because Oasis is such a huge component of Rick, and you know, no one can really fill the large Pasquale's shoes, so I think that if you have interest as students, you should try to make it. So I just want to add to that. So just wanted to get that out there. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Murphy Bannon. Next, we move to a staff update, Mark Paolucci. Thank you. Uh, at the last, uh, the last meeting two weeks ago, I had a quick meeting with some of the other members of the student government about uh, running meetings and Tonight's meeting is uh, is excellent. I hope we're moving in a good direction. I think the meetings move along a lot quicker when everybody's involved and, and uh, prepared for them. So I hope tonight's meeting continues to be a good meeting. Um, just one quick note. I, I'm also vice president of the Professional Staff Association at the college. One of the things I do periodically is look at the website and look at positions that are available at the college for employment. And if you go on to the college website, it's right on the home page of the thing called employment, click on it, and you'll notice there's 35 positions that are posted. Some of them are full-time faculty positions. I think there was like 18 or so full-time faculty positions that are already posted for the fall of 2015. And it's almost, it's a good thing. Uh, some, some of it's bad, it's, that means some faculty might be leaving, but um, we don't want them to leave, we want them to stay, we like them all. But it's, it could be some vacant <coughs> positions that maybe Dr. Kane was talking about that uh, are finally getting filled. And so that's a, it, it's maybe the college anticipating more revenue for the fall of 2015. So we can fill some of these vacant positions so we can provide better services to the college. The college doesn't produce anything, we don't manufacture anything, but we do a service that manufactures an education for students so then they can be productive and make more money and pay more taxes. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. I'm a product of that. I'm a Rhode Islander, poor kid, first generation college student, just like many of you, state and state, you know, after I and got a job. It's a good job, I like it. <laughs> I made more money because I went to college and I paid more taxes to the state. So it's like, that's kind of the cycle that we all have to be in. Unfortunately, sometimes the taxpayers don't think like that. And they say, well, I don't have a kid at the college. I don't want to give my taxpayers, well, I don't want to donate to the Senior Citizen Center because I'm not a senior citizen. <laughs> but there are some people. It's the, the whole tax thing has been around for thousands of years. <laughs> people don't like paying them. They only like paying for the services they, they need. I don't want to pay the fire department if my house doesn't burn down. <laughs> if my house burns down, I want the fire department to show up. So it's kind of like the mentality is that students need to have also. We're paying for those services. I mean, and we want better services, we want better faculty. I'm not saying that adjunct faculty don't do as good a job, but to keep our accreditation, we need to have so many <coughs> full-time faculty. We no, need to have so many people in the counseling center and services and departments going. So that, that's kind of like the idea to, to have. And also, to just touch on Rob's uh, point, um, the next year when we come back in January, you have to think of yourselves as, do I really want to be an executive board member. You have to start positioning yourself for next year. And I remind Hillary shaking her head because I think she's heard this story. Like, <laughs> uh, Nick Lehman probably heard this even once. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you need to position yourself where, where you want to be next, uh, you know, next fall. And it starts, it starts in January when you guys come back. So thank you, man. Thank you, Mark Paolucci. Next, we move to alum, alumni update, Hillary Costa. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So just a couple of things. One, um, for those of you that may know alumni that have recently graduated, we're having another Young Alumni Committee meeting next Tuesday, the 9th, yep, the day before the holiday party, at 515 in the Kaufman Center on the other side of campus. Um, so if you know anyone that's recently graduated, please direct them that way. There will be dinner served. So. 
Um, and then another quick thing regarding the tuition hike conversation, I'm not gonna sit here and advocate for either side or say that we should increase it or that we shouldn't increase it or that I'm against or for it. My, my issue runs deeper than that. I'm just gonna say right now, I firmly believe, well not firmly, I have 95% certainty that this tuition hike is going to be passed and I'm neither for it or against it, but here's why. So it's gonna be passed because it's been proven time and time again that college students do not show up at the polls. If we really, really didn't want tuition hikes to happen or we wanted to be represented either way, whether we wanted more state aid instead of increasing taxpayer dollars, we would show up at the polls. So this is a PSA for college students. Whether um, I know some of you live out of state and it's difficult because you gotta do mail ballots and things like that. You gotta do what you gotta do. Because either way, a college student is a college student all over the country. And whether you're, whether you're in Rhode Island and as a college student and you, you're from New York, or whether you're a college student in Rhode Island and you're from Massachusetts, <laughs> you have to, college students are fighting for the same thing all over the country. We're all fighting the same recession. We're all fighting the same really piss poor job market. So I just hope that instead of having this attitude of my vote doesn't count, I'm going up against a ton of adults. In fact, it's more or less when you look at the polls, the millennials versus the end of the baby boomer generation. So just keep that in mind next time. So again, not for the tuition hike increase, not against it, not anything. I'm just making a point that if students really want to band together, they need to think about representing themselves in the best way, the best way that they know how or should know how. And I'm stepping off of my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, alumni. Where is that? Just a, sorry, just a point of a brief uh, information. Um, when you say that we're not showing up in the polls, in, in the, how does how is that affected? The reason that the tuition hike gets passed is because the representatives who are in office for you don't feel like they'll feel a hit from you because when they pass that tuition hike. So if you notice, they're not making any negative impacts on Medicaid or senior citizen services. I don't want to get into a big like political you're, you're just saying, you, I was but like, I wasn't sure if you were getting at like that's the was, point I'm trying to make that is that coming you, like you guys aren't gonna come down on these representatives and kick them out of office and make a significant impact on, on them at the polls as an incumbent because you're not at the polls. It's the senior citizens and people. I'm not gonna get into this discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, all my representative Costa. And with that, we move to appoints and, oh God, appointments, <coughs> resignations, and vacancies. The floor is yours, President Santuri. Thank you. So I have no appointments this <laughs> evening. Uh, we, I will leave off the vacancies after, but we do have one resignation this evening, but instead of having me talk, I will yield the floor to Representative Rose to read his retirement letter to the body at this time, because I know he's been uh, patiently waiting. So Representative Rose, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, thank you President Centauri. And I just wanna, just wanna before, before I read this letter to everyone tonight, as as part of my retirement announcement, I I forgot to mention it in this letter uh, that I will also uh, be resigning uh, from the Student Organizations Committee and the Committee on College Elections as a result of this retirement. And now I'm going to read my letter. Oh, damn, I can't. I hate when you have papers like this. To the members of Parliament, I would like to start off by saying that I'm putting in this letter to Parliament announcing my retirement. When I first started Parliament back in the spring of 2013, I didn't know what I was supposed to do or what I was in for. That first day when I started Parliament, I had a mentor on my side, and that mentor was the former speaker and current president of Student Community Government Incorporated, Robertson Dury Jr. It was because of him I, I was able to accomplish a lot during my two years of Parliament. The reason why 
I wanted to join student parliament was because I wanted to represent the students of Rhode Island College, not for personal gain or represent myself. Within two years, uh, I represented three constituencies on a law on parliament. I had two resolutions passed within my two years of service on parliament. I wanted to join student parliament to better the campus of Rhode Island College. While on parliament, I made a lot of friends, including the current speaker of Student Community Government Incorporated, Laura Howard. Not only she was my friend, she was also my political ally and a person who I can trust. Also, I went to my constituents and I asked them what they want me to bring up uh, to parliament at every meeting. And I made a promise that <coughs> I would do everything in my power to serve the students at Brown College. Before I leave student parliament and Brown College, I would like to say thank you to all my colleagues on parliament for giving me the opportunity and the honor to join student parliament to better the Rhode Island College campus and community. I would also like to say thank you uh, to all my constituents, including by New Delta, because I didn't want the, them to be left out, but and they're, they're part of my constituency, so for supporting my endeavors uh, uh, to better the campus of Rhode Island College. I also like to thank the following organizations uh, for their support of my endeavors. WXIN, The Anchor, Anchor TV, uh, Programming, Ballroom Dance, and I, I, I accidentally left out to uh, Gamer and Otaku. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> those two are good choice right now. I would like to say a special thank you to two great organizations for supporting me during my service uh, on student bombing. The Brothers of the Epsilon Chapter of Kappa Delta Phi and the Sisters of the Epsilon Pi Chapter of Alpha Sigma Tau. If it wasn't for all of these people and my constituents, I wouldn't have even reached my goal of graduation. When I leave here tonight, don't be saddened. I want you to rejoice and be happy because of my dedication to serve the students of Rhode Island College. To members of Parliament, I sincerely hope that I would be recognized for all my accomplishments I made during my service on Parliament. I also sincerely hope, and this is to you, uh, Secretary Bermudez, um, I also sincerely hope uh, that I'm invited to... to <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
my call for the very good. It, um, is it possible to abstain? Yes. yes. Okay. We're getting to abstentions. Okay. Yes. Just making sure. And abstentions from this. Abstentions. Secretary Bermudez abstains. Representative Perzoko abstains. Representative Johnson abstains. And Representative Rose abstains. <coughs>
say very briefly on that matter that there were a number of vacancies going into the spring on a number of committees and commissions. I'm not going to read off the list because most of you know them by now, but if you are interested in joining a committee or commission, whether it be SEG or college, uh, please do see me at some point before the end of the semester and I'll appoint you officially uh, in the spring if we can agree and if not, uh, we'll, and if so, we'll do it on a temp basis as well. But I'd like to try and fill as many positions as possible for going into the spring. And if you have any friends who are interested in making an impact, you know, impact the student parliament, committees are a great way to do that. So that's all I have, Speaker Howard. Thanks, Brent. And with that, we move to issues of parliament members. If you have an issue, it's so hard not to say get a tissue, um, please raise your cards. Secretary Bermudez, uh, the floor is yours. Wonderful. 